Hello, United Family. Uh, Thursday of Holy Week, uh, we've tried to do a devotion each day uh, leading up uh, to Easter. And uh, today uh, is, is definitely uh, one of those days that quite a bit happened. Yesterday on Wednesday, there wasn't a lot. Uh, we find some very intimate uh, time that I think Jesus spent with his disciples and, and some very close friends uh, that had been very loyal uh, to Jesus, but uh, there's there's three different things that we find here on Thursday uh, that happened and that are extremely significant. Uh, one of those is that Jesus observed the Passover meal with his disciples. Um, this is where we find uh, that he institutes the Lord's Supper and communion uh, that we have the privilege to take in worship. Um, we also find uh, this is where Jesus actually washes the disciples' feet and uh, institutes an ordinance that we observe as a church uh, on Easter Sunday night. And I think uh, his servanthood and his humility uh, is displayed in that act of washing the disciples' feet. Uh, so we, we see that Jesus observes the Passover meal and, and how uh, important that was to observe uh, for Jesus and his disciples. Uh, we also find um, that after uh, Jesus uh, observed the Passover meal, we find that all of the disciples leave and they go to the Garden of Gethsemane. And this is the part of the story that I want to highlight the most in this devotion. Um, whenever they go to the Garden, all of the disciples are there and uh, Jesus tells his disciples to stay while he goes a little further into the garden to pray. Uh, but he does take three other of his disciples, and we find uh, that he takes Peter, uh, who, in, in the irony, who just pled his loyalty uh, to Jesus, that he would never uh, forsake Jesus. Um, but anyway, so Peter and then the two sons of Zebedee, uh, go with Jesus a little further into the garden. And, and he says these words uh, to uh, his disciples, but especially to Peter and the sons of Zebedee. Um, he, he says this. Uh, he says, watch and pray. He says, my soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. Watch with me. Watch with me. And that was his sole request that his disciples would pray and watch with Jesus as Jesus kind of goes a little further into that garden away from even Peter and the sons of Zebedee and he, he begins to pray. And he prays this prayer. And this prayer, uh, actually someone sent me a uh, uh, a YouTube link for this song uh, that talks about this that she remembered uh, singing at her church as a young girl. Uh, but this song was about that Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus prayed and he said, Lord, one of my favorite verses, Lord, if there be any way that this cup could pass from me, Lord, if there would be any way that I wouldn't have to endure what I'm fixing to have to endure in the next day. And then he stops his prayer. And he says, not my will, but thy will be done. That prayer has been a staple for me. Uh, whenever I look at my family, my children, my wife, and I look and ask God to help me be who he wants me to be. And, and I oftentimes will say, Lord, not my will, your will be done. God, use me, use my family, use us in a way that would please and honor you. Not my will, but thy will be done. And, and so after Jesus prays and in and, and this earnestness, and, and it says that he's, He's exceedingly sorrowful even unto death. You would have thought that would have triggered something in the disciples' minds and in the disciples' hearts. But, but Jesus comes back 
and he finds the disciples sleeping. And he wakes them and he says to them, watch and pray with me. And he goes away again and the Bible says that he prays the exact same prayer. Lord, if there be any way that this cup could pass from me, but not my will, thy will be done. He comes back and the disciples are asleep again. And he goes the third time and prays the same prayer. Three occasions Jesus prays. And I think that's some indication of his humanity. Jesus being fully God, but yet he was fully man. And I think he was really struggling uh, with the days that were at hand and the death that he knew he would have to endure. But he, he's willing. He's willing to do the will of God the Father. He's willing to sacrifice his own life so that you and I could have eternal life. Not my will, but thy will be done. I hope that registers a little with you today as we go through Thursday of the Holy Week. I hope that you can say, not my will, but thy will be done. God, have your way in my life. There's one other thing that happens here on Thursday of the Holy Week, and that actually happens the very moment that Jesus comes back to his disciples on that third occasion, and he wakes them and he says, hey, take your sleep now. I'm done. I I've settled it with God the Father. I've settled it in my heart. I'm ready. I'm ready for whatever comes. And while those words are even coming out of his lips, there's a mob that enters into the garden led by Judas Iscariot. And Judas approaches Jesus, kisses him, signifying that he was Jesus. And the Roman soldiers take Jesus and they arrest him on this night of Thursday of Holy Week, leading to what we know as Good Friday, which we'll talk about tomorrow. God bless you, and I hope you have a great Thursday of Holy Week. But just keep in mind, Sunday's coming.